Hi. Today I'm going over the Dissolve tab in the Poemi Tune Shader. The version I'll be using in this video is 8.1 of Poemi Tune, since it's the newest one to the free roster. I won't be addressing the Geometric Dissolve feature, nor will I be covering Poemi 8.2 as it's still under development. If you're interested in obtaining the most up-to-date version of the Poemi Shader, you can find it on Poemi's Patreon page where you can also provide support. Throughout this video, I'll be exploring several tabs that relate to the stuff that you can use in the Dissolve tab. Take this video with a grain of salt as Poemi continues to refine both his shader and his documentation on his website. For those that are using 8.0, most of the settings will be the same with some little changes. And if you're using 7.3, Godspeed to you. Anyway, starting right off, pull down the arrow on your avatar, select the mesh you want to dissolve, go to its material, special effects, and then turn dissolve on. A frequent option I'll be using is Dissolve Alpha to show the effects. And for this video as well, I'll be using more than just my avatar to show the effects of the tab as well. So I'll be clicking on my materials themselves since I can't select both of my objects. So first off, we have Dissolve Type. Basic will cause everything to vanish simultaneously. Point to point dissolves from one point to the other. Spherical dissolves in a circular pattern. And center out dissolves from where the player is looking. Notice that switching between the types, certain options vanished while new menus appeared on the bottom. These menus offer additional settings for the types you're using. For point to point, you have world slash local. Local is relative to the object's coordinates. World uses the world coordinates. And vertex colors use vertex colors for the positions. Poemi says to generally set this to local for avatars unless you're utilizing the world positions for specific effects. An example I can give, any world can be at a different height. Edge length makes the edge more thicker. Moving the start and end points will let you change the direction of the dissolve. And clamp dissolve will dissolve the rest of the mesh if it doesn't fully dissolve. Notice removing the starting point will clamp the dissolve effect back to not dissolving anything. It works both ways, so removing the end will clamp the dissolve effect back to the end of the mesh. For spherical, center point changes the position of the dissolve point. Radius makes the point bigger or smaller. Invert inverts the whole effect and clamp dissolve will dissolve the rest of the mesh if it doesn't fully dissolve. For center out, center out mode has a view direction, meaning it will follow the player's view. Custom direction lets you change the direction, and light direction taps into the world lights for the dissolve. Going back to view direction, invert inverts the whole effect. Use pixel normals uses normal textures, and power when increased lowers the power of the dissolve. Moving on to the edges, Edge Width adjusts the size of the edge, making it larger or smaller. Edge Hardness makes the edge smooth or solid. Edge Color allows you to select the edge color. Edge Gradient lets you apply gradients to the edge. Clicking on the small circle, you can choose from your gradient textures. If you want to make your own, click on the long box to open this menu. You can use the top arrows for alphas while the bottom arrows affect the colors. Selecting one of the bottom arrows, you can adjust the gradient positioning. And you can make more arrows by simply clicking on an empty space where the existing arrows are. Selecting the modes, blend mode blends the colors together while fix snaps the colors together. Lastly, for edges, edge emissions when turned up will emit a glow. For the dissolve category, dissolve color lets you change the color of the mesh when dissolved. Turning the alpha slider down, by the way, will let you go invisible. This is what creates the invisible toggles effect. If it's not working for you, change your rendering preset to cut out. Applying a dissolved texture on the other hand will show a texture when it's dissolved, and dissolved emission strength will emit a glow just like edge emissions. For transitions, the dissolved gradient uses gradient textures for dissolving. Take a gradient texture like I have here, or make your own, and it will follow the flow of the colors. Note that this option will only appear in basic for 8.1. For its counterpart, dissolved noise, it works very similar. Applying a black and white noise texture will let it dissolve like that noise. There is a variety of noise examples that you can choose by searching noise. When you alter the type as well, you'll notice that the effect behaves a little differently compared to the basic dissolve type. A bit off topic, but if you're wondering why my shirt is having a hard time showing these effects, it's due to my UV map setup. My textures are atlas together to reduce texture count, which can have a whole other video on its own, but what you need to know is that my shirt is very small in this UV map. To fix this problem, clicking on the arrow, you'll have more settings, which I'll get into shortly but increasing the tiling will help the gradient or noise you're using show its effect better on your mesh. Detailed noise smoothing smooths out the dissolved noise. Despite my efforts, I wasn't able to get this to work for the life of me. Switching through all the types and then through most of the noises yielded no results. As seen in this clip in the Poyomi Discord, when the noise smoothing came out, this is what it was supposed to do. I'm not entirely certain if it's a bug with the version I'm using, the mesh I'm using, or just my way of using it. 
so you might have better luck than me. Dissolved Detail Strength influences the edge detail. Turning up the strength will increase the effect of the gradient slash noise you give it. Dissolve Alpha controls the actual effect of dissolving. Before moving on to the rest, there were these arrows I mentioned earlier. I will be using the Dissolve Texture and the Dissolve Noise menus to show what these do. Tiling allows you to make the texture repeat itself horizontally or vertically across the object. Offset lets you move the texture around the object. Panning creates the illusion of motion. Note that this might not work right off the bat. Click on this effect box and enable animated materials. UV refers to the four sets of UVs you can have and the presets Poyomi gave us. UV0 is the main UV on your mesh, and UV1 to 3 are the extra UV sets. If your mesh only has one UV map, changing this won't really do anything. If you're wanting to learn more about UV mapping, it involves Blender-like programs, which I'll go into a little bit more later in the video. Now the presets relate to the modifiers tab. Pulling it down, you'll find more than just the presets I'm covering, so just remember I'll be only talking about these four modifiers. Panosphere makes the UV appear panoramic or spherical. Enabling stereo typically refers to the stereoscopic effect, meaning that it will give each eye a little bit of a different look from each other. Now, just keep in mind that this is very unpleasant on the eyes, so enabling perspective correct will correct the perspective in VR. World position uses the world position for the dissolve effect. Moving around will look like the dissolve is staying in place. And pulling down local world UV, you can use world X and Y to change the directions of it. Local position uses the mesh position for the dissolve effect. Going back to local world UV, you can choose local X and Y to change the directions of it as well. Polar UV creates circular or radial patterns. Pulling down polar UV in modifiers, you can see that it has its own sets of UVs. Center coordinate lets you move the effect on the X or Y axis. Radial scale makes the effect bigger. Length scale makes the effect shrink. Say that 10 times. And spiral power makes the effect spiral more. Distort UV applies a distortion or wrapping effect. Going back to the modifiers tab, enabling distortion UV, it has its own UV sets. With mask, you can choose where to apply the effects when using a black or white texture mask. Remember, distortion only occurs in the white portions it covers. Pulling down the arrow, if you wanted to get a little crazy with it, you can use a mask with other colors like this one. Applying the distortion textures lets you further mess with the distortion effect. I'll be using more noise textures as an example. Strength 1 increases the distortion effect of the first texture, and Strength 2 increases the distortion effect of the second texture. Note that turning panning up will create this effect. And lastly, Invert inverts the whole effect. Everything that you can adjust usually offers the same amount of options, even beyond the Dissolve tab, so feel free to tweak them to your liking. Dissolve Mask uses black and white textures, or as the name says, Mask, to dissolve parts of the mesh. The black areas remain unaffected, while the white areas will dissolve. Global Mask relates to the Global Mask tab. Pulling down color and normals go to Global Mask. Enabling textures going into it allows you to have four different RGBA texture masks. An example, putting a texture that has red, green, blue, or alpha like I have here will let the Global Mask work in the Dissolve tab. Going back to the Dissolve tab and selecting 1R will only dissolve the parts that are red on the mask. This goes for 1G being green, 1B being blue, and 1A being alpha. For the rest as in 1R, 2R, 3R, and 4R, they correspond to the textures in the global mask you're using. 2 is the second texture, 3 is the third texture, and 4th is the fourth texture. Now, if you do want the opposite effect, change multiply to subtract. You can try the rest of these, but pretty much they do all the same thing, just in a different way. For what's left in the global mask tab, I would feel bad if I didn't go over it since it's not really documented right now, so I might as well do it. In modifiers, Back face masking lets you dissolve both of the faces on your mesh, the back only faces on your mesh, or the front only faces on your mesh. To use this properly, go to your rendering tab and put cold to off. This is how you see your front faces and your back faces at the same time. Mirror masking lets you dissolve both in the mirror and out of the mirror. Inside dissolves only inside of the mirror, and outside only dissolves outside of the mirror. Camera masking lets you dissolve both in the camera and out of the camera. Inside dissolves only inside of the camera and outside dissolves only outside of the camera. Distance masking dissolves by a distance. In position to use, pixel position uses the furthest pixels on your object to dissolve, and object position will undissolve the whole object. Max to min distances allows you to change the distance to where the dissolve will dissolve. You can reverse this effect by increasing the min distance, then decreasing the max distance. For min to max distance alpha, it changes how much your object will dissolve. You can reverse this effect as well by sliding min alpha up, then max alpha down. In blending, 
Replace doesn't use the mask as in it will dissolve the whole thing, and multiply will apply the mask for those parts not to dissolve. Now note, testing this effect in-game only works around the 0-0 area. Ideally I thought it would make it disappear when a mesh gets closer to you as it does in my project, but that isn't actually the case. I found that this effect only works around the 0-0 point as well in my project. I tried talking about it in the Poemi Discord and I never really got a response, so I guess I'm in the same shoes as Oblivious over here. Options allows you to dissolve the global mask part of your mesh, switching the types for max min sliders, moving the slider more to the right will dissolve part of the mask, and moving the slider more to the left will undissolve the regular dissolve. And force toggles forces the dissolve on or off. Using vertex color mask uses the vertex values to dissolve stuff. Depending on if your model is vertex painted, unlike mine, any vertices that aren't vertex painted will dissolve. For example, in Blender, if you vertex paint parts red, and select red on the vertex mask, anything that wasn't painted red will dissolve. And lastly, continuous dissolve speed will make the dissolve move on its own continuously. Moving on to the final three menus. Hue shift lets you change the hue of course. Dissolve speed loops the color of the mesh itself when dissolved, while dissolve shift lets you slide through the colors manually instead. If you don't have a texture like I do, you can select dissolve color for the same effect. Enabling edge lets you change the color of the edge, changing the edge color to red. Edge speed loops the edge color, and edge shift lets you slide through the colors instead. UV tile dissolve relates to the UV tile discard section. What UV tile discard does is it lets you discard specific parts of your mesh located in the UV tiles. For instance, let's say you're like me and one of your meshes has multiple clothings fused into one. Selecting discard UV, picking from UV 1 through 3, then using the toggles will discard those parts you put in those tiles. Going back to UV tile dissolve, it works the same way, it's just set up a little differently. Selecting UV tile, then pulling down the last row, using the slider will dissolve it instead of it just disappearing like its UV tile discard counterpart. Now, this also ties in the UV maps, so before jumping into Blender to figure it out, I recommend to at least watch a video on how UV maps work. Once you know how to use UV maps, it really only is one video by cams on how to do UV tiles. I'll say, this is a little advanced for some beginners, so take your time learning both UV mapping and UV tiles for your avatar. There's more to UV tiles than just dissolving. You can increase the performance of your avatar since parts of the texture are discarded and are not being rendered on screen anymore. Yes, the polygons are still being rendered, but parts of the texture isn't. Another is you can remove clipping pretty much entirely by discarding parts of the body that are under the clothes. You're going to have to find an alternative way to do these toggles when uploading for Android since the Poiami shader isn't available for that platform. I recommend not to use this technique as a way to dodge doing weight painting. You know it's a bad idea, it's not that hard to do, and I swear once you start doing it you'll get pretty good at it. There's a video from Royal Skies about how weight painting works. He did a really good job at explaining it and I highly recommend it because that's how I learned it. I'll show you a picture I made to visualize where everything is on the UV tile compared to the UV map it uses, so use it as you please. Locked in Anim Sliders functions the same way as Dissolve Alpha. This option can be used if you have multiple materials on a mesh like this cube I have here. Now pulling it down there are 10 alpha sliders to mess with. You can record different ones for various materials on your mesh renderer. Now if you're a little confused on how this works, let's say you want to dissolve multiple materials separately from each other on the same mesh. Locked in Anim Sliders will let you do this. Note, there's actually two ways of doing this and I question why this menu still existed, as you can use the rename and lock option instead of locked in anim sliders for the same purpose. But as stated in the doc rephrasing what it says, you can have multiple materials dissolve independently on their own alpha sliders. In certain scenarios, if you wish to dissolve them simultaneously as well, you can record a single alpha slider for all the materials. I'll give you an example on how to use locked in anim sliders, as well as an example of using rename and locked instead. Just to note, I won't be going over anything in the animator on how to do these toggles. For the anim slider example, go into the animation tab, make an animation for the first material on alpha 0, 0 being undissolved and 1 being dissolved. Notice I have to add animated for locks since I'm on a cube and not an avatar. This option should appear automatically when you animate these effects. You may have also spotted that it dissolves both materials instead of just one. Bear with me, I'll show you how to fix this. Creating another animation, pulling the second material down, and recording alpha 1, 0 being undissolved and 1 being dissolved. Now the reason it didn't dissolve separately is because the materials aren't locked yet, as in the name of the option, locked in animation sliders. So locking the materials, you can see that it dissolves separately now. If you're in the scenario where you're wanting an animation to dissolve them all together as well, make another animation and record all the materials on one of the sliders that aren't used yet. I usually do the last one. Now as you can see, locking the materials, the slider works on both of them. For the renamed when locked example, 
Right click on Dissolve Alpha and hit Rename to Unlocked. This will lock the animation and create a unique suffix based on the material's name. If you don't know what that means, that's fine. All it does is makes the material unique from the other materials with its name when you record stuff as it's locked. Enabling it for the other material as well. Lock the materials before you record the animations. If you record when the materials aren't locked, it will just record the basic path of that setting. Making animation for the first material on Dissolve Alpha. Zero being undissolve and one being dissolve. And you'll see that it only dissolves that material. Creating another animation for the second material. Zero being undissolve and one being dissolve. You'll see that it only dissolves that material as well. You could do this for other things as well than just dissolving. Just know that some options may not work. The documentation for renamed when locked goes over pretty well. All right, well that pretty much covers everything you'll find in the Dissolve tab. I'm starting to consider diving into more of the parts of the Poimi shader later, but first I need to explore more of the other effects. I'm more of a Blender guy to be honest. As you saw in this video alone, it went beyond just the Dissolve tab. I wasn't expecting the Dissolve tab to connect to so many things when researching for this video, and as Poimi is consistent with the shader updates, it can make finding specific information challenging. So I actually wanted to give out some recommendations. Poemi's documentation is helpful for understanding how things work, though just be warned certain areas might lack documentation, haven't been added to it, or just haven't been updated in a bit. So much of what I discussed, like Global Mask, was me figuring it out. Twitter, I, I mean X, is a good place to find out how people are using the shader, and Poemi's Discord server is likely the best resource if you're keen on diving into deeper into this complex shader. Remember, this shader is a real beast in terms of capabilities, and it takes time to learn it. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you learned something about the Dissolve tab or any of the other stuff, I'm glad I've helped. You can support me on Ko-Fi as I plan to upload more stuff in the future. But until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.